the deep ocean filled the deadly waters an unforgiving place for anyone that goes near creatures such as venomous jellyfish jaw-breaking sharks and even creatures unknown to man themselves there's three goals an enchanted neptunian armor set slaying the wither and lastly getting rid of water's most terrifying creature the leviathan could we survive another hundred days in this world watch till the end of the video to find out how it went Day one, we started where we left off last time, which was in the end. We weren't doing too well in terms of health or hunger, so I wasn't exactly sure what to do. I decided it would probably be best to take some of the magma ore that is attached to the side of the pillars all around. And then like the moron I am, I decided to look into the eyes of an enderman. By accident, by accident, don't, it's by accident, trust me. But don't worry, I know how to deal with these situations. I built up, treated it like a golem in a speedrun, and honestly just went on with my day. I went back to the place that we actually entered from because I saw something that I wanted. It was these nice looking Diamond blocks? Well, there aren't actually diamond blocks, but they were similar to diamond blocks. These blocks were actually known as Neptonium blocks. Now don't forget about these. These blocks are important for endgame stuff, so remember where I got these from. I had two choices here. Yes, I could have got the Elytra, but you see, I was dealing with one heart. I wasn't gonna risk that. I honestly wasn't, because throwing an Ender Pearl reduces health. So if I threw an Ender Pearl to get over to the end cities and stuff, I was risking a whole lot more and I didn't want to end off the series with me dying on day one. So what I decided to do was jump back right into the portal. It was the safest choice and I stuck by it. I could always come back for the elytra some other time, so there was really no rush. Afterwards, I then tried escaping because I don't quite remember how I got in because it's been a little bit. So what I just decided to do was mine up. Who honestly wouldn't in this situation? But right when I thought I caught a break and I was about to go back into the waters get some fish, cook it, and, you know, eat myself back up to full health, there was lava. Luckily, this wasn't in the nether, because if it was in the nether, I would have been dead by now. We blocked it off, and I was wondering, was there a bed of lava above us? But that wouldn't make sense, because we're underwater. But then it kind of hit me, the fact that we're kind of stuck underneath the biome that's consisted of a bunch of obsidian, magma blocks, and an entire sheet of lava. Yep. We were kind of stuck, and I had to think about this one, because I did know there was a sheet of lava above us, but it couldn't have been on every single block, right? I was correct. Upon going straight up instead of mining up, I ended up finding a location that didn't have any lava whatsoever. After I made it back up, I decided to swim back towards my base. Days 2 to 5. It went pretty smoothly until I realized I was slowly running out of oxygen, so I decided to take a bit of a detour collect some more oxygen and head back up. This honestly happened a couple times because I wanted no situation where I had the lack of air. I was getting back home sound and safe, all right? This was in fact a tedious process that I had to do for a while, but eventually we got back home. Day six to 10. Upon entering back into our base of operations, I then realized why I wasn't able to get any of the stuff from the chests, you know, that we had prepared. We probably could have been more prepared for the whole food situation, but I realized we had a flash flood and there was a bunch of sharks in the base. Oh great, perfect. Now we got a bit of a reunion. I slowly crept back into my base. Luckily for us, all the sharks were already gone and it was honestly just flooded. It took a while for us to get rid of all the water because we didn't have any sponges. So I just used cobblestone. Honestly, just filled it all up with cobblestone and broke it right back. I'm so glad that in my earphones, I decided to blast music for this portion. Because this took long, really freaking long. After all of that was sorted out, I wanted to go back into the nether. I looked around some of the chests and noticed that we didn't have any flint or gravel. So I went into the mines, grabbed some gravel, came right back up and made a flint steel. I did this because we lacked trees. We needed much more and I wanted to mass produce a bunch of trees. Because honestly, if I continue this series, I'm going to need a lot of wood. I also took all the dirt that I can possibly scounge up from everything that I have left over and went into the nether. Days 11 to 15. I went out of my way and started planting a bunch of these trees with torches around it. The reason I put torches is because trees actually need a certain light level to grow anywhere. And yes, they can grow underground, and yes, they can grow in the nether. I saw a couple comments talking about this. Search it up. As long as it has a certain light level, it is able to grow. Try yourselves if you don't believe me. I know that I had a singular tree in the overworld, but the problem with making a tree farm in the overworld is the fact that I needed to clear out a large area of space because that's the second thing they need. Along with light, they needed space to grow. And so the nether has a bunch of space. 
Yes, it can all come burning and crashing down on me if just a singular ghast hits it. But listen, okay, we had big plans. Those were those are just little casualties. All right, casualties is what I'll call them. And I'm not even joking. Upon placing these trees, guess what I get attacked with next? A ghast. I get attacked by a ghast. All right, all right, game. I I got you. Luckily for us, it didn't actually hit anything. We managed to kill it along with a bit of quartz that we mined up. The reason I mined all that quartz is because, yeah, the outside of the base looks really good. And the interior of the top part looks really good. Our cave looks horrendous, okay? I wanted an upgrade. I was not messing with the dirt, cobble, and just like cave look that our base even had. I had a little bit of quartz already in the nether saved up, so that made things a lot easier. Day 16 to 20. This duration of time was one of the most useless things I could have ever done, alright? Now let me explain. During our time in the nether, I also decided to look for a bastion. Listen, okay? I'm a bit of a moron, alright? I forgot that this was an older version of Minecraft, so in reality, I was searching for nothing. But I was blindly looking for a bastion, and I wanted some loot from the bastion. You know what? Never mind. I was scouting the area for anything. Anything, okay? Not a bastion. Definitely not a bastion. Can we move on from this? On my way back, after finding some extraordinary results from uh, my not bastion search, I decided to do a bolt clutch. You know, that was kind of one of the biggest highlights of this portion. Once I was near the portal, I also decided to plant a couple more trees. I had to craft a few more torches, which was completely fine, and decided to light up the area a bit as well. This action alone was probably one of the most beneficial to the long term of this series. So, uh, yeah. Days 21 to 25. After arriving back at our base, I find out that the tree we planted at our base actually has grown, so I decide to obviously mine that wood, because we needed some more. The tree provided us with an apple. This also helped out a bunch when I got into some late game stuff, so watch at the end if you want to see it in use. After mining the tree, I then decide to start working on the revamped version of the underground cave. This used two blocks. The first was obviously quartz that we got from the nether, and the second was smelted cobblestone. Now if you guys didn't know, if you smelt cobblestone, you get stone. After putting four stone in the crafting grid, you then get yourself some stone bricks. I feel like this was a really nice matchup, so I decided to use those for the walls of the underground area. Not only did I revamp the cave area, but I also decided to revamp the staircase down from the top bit to the bottom bit. I felt like it was really nice. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Days 26 to 30. We were missing a few stone bricks and I wanted to put some finishing touches. In order to do that, I just left it smelting in the furnace and realized I needed a bit more food. I was running out of it and pretty fast. The oceans for some reason that day were looking a little dead. I couldn't find any fish nearby, so I just kept going. Eventually, we ran into another one of the structures that I used as my base, except this was a different type of structure. Instead of having the infrastructure that my one originally had, this one was a bit of an underwater library filled with bookshelves and ladders. The reason this was actually super good was due to the fact that we had 74 levels gathered up. That was good, because I needed to enchant some of my gear, because honestly, some of the goals on this are extremely difficult. After getting a bunch of the books, we were then ready to keep going. I still needed some food, so I kept going in one direction so I wouldn't get lost into the ocean. I found some outliers from the herd and decided to kill them off and just simply moved on to the next. Eventually, we found schools worth of them. And I spent a lot of time just endlessly killing these fish. Alongside this, this also gave me a bunch of experience, not to mention all the creeper fish we ran into. Plenty of it around. I got all the fish I needed. I needed to then smelt it, so I went back to my base. I found that all the stone that I had smelting originally has already been smelted and made them into stone bricks. Afterwards, I put all the fish into the furnace and just waited on that. Decided to then upgrade my enchantment room. Obviously, as you guys probably already saw from the first 100 days, we created a really disgraceful enchanting room. So I wanted to upgrade it. I wanted to put all the bookshelves in and have a little bit of a design into it. This is what it ended up looking like. I was kind of proud of it. It took a while and I was also testing out a bunch of different styles, but eventually I was sufficed with what I had. The roof of the cave was still untouched, and I had to think of a block that I could use for it. I was thinking at first, I could just make the quartz into slabs and use that. But, I then decided to change my mind, went back into the chest and got some iron slabs. A little bit of a heads up because a lot of people were saying, hey, why didn't you use the iron blocks that you can find all around the world with the structures that spawn, turn it into iron and use it as a resource. They're stuck on build only. Even if I did decide to put it into the crafting table, it wouldn't give me the iron ingots because they're stuck on build only mode. I don't make the rules, that's just how the mod works, so I just had to go with it. And bam, there's the roof. 
I also need to upgrade the floor, but I didn't know what material to use for this either, but eventually ended up using endstone. Now, if you guys didn't know, the blocks that you can find within the end itself, if you put that in a 2x2 grid, then you'll get yourself some endstone. I decided to make that into slabs and use that as the floor. I thought it was a pretty nice touch. We ran out of iron slabs for the roof, so I went out back into the ocean to get some of that. It took a little bit, but eventually I did find a place that was broken down and took a bunch from there and came right back. This new base of ours was looking pretty good. I was sufficed with it. I didn't really want to dwell too much time within the building process of it in general, so then I decided to move on. Days 36 to 40. Any tree that I found there still standing up, I decided to break it and collect the saplings from it. I also looked around for a bit. I wanted to find some more places where I can extend our tree farm so we can get more trees just in general. But I also came to the conclusion that, uh oh, we actually need to be in the nether for the trees to grow. Because if you're not in the chunk, they're not going to grow. And we get attacked by another gas. Look at the chances, right? Look at the chances. I'm basically a gas magnet. Now, I'm, I'm not sure if this is a good thing or, or a bad thing, but it, it's something. I had to spend a little time in the nether, so I gave the trees a chance to grow. What I ended up doing was simply collecting a bunch of glowstone. I wanted a different source of light because the torches honestly were not cutting it for me. Not to mention if another flash flood did happen and took out all the torches again, there was also a chance that other underwater mobs would spawn, and I didn't exactly want that. On my way back, I also decided to mine a bunch of the trees, and after making all these trees, guess what I decided to use the wood on? Doors. I decided to use it on stacks of doors all right no but all jokes aside i made these for a very important reason we were gonna get one of the goals out of the way i wanted to kill the guardian so we had to find ourselves a monument we were just simply gonna use the door strap because i only had one oxygen filter and that isn't enough to suffice me through that entire trip but adrian why don't you just bring the oxygen tank with you well i did but then realized that haste was gonna be a problem if i ever placed it that thing was gonna stay put until i kill all three of the guardians okay because we get haste and haste makes it so we can't mine that fast and that was a problem days 41 to 50 we were ready to get going i decided to leave the base and search for the monument i haven't exactly come by one yet so that was a little bit of an issue and a bit of a concern because i had no idea how rare the monument even was so in my head i was thinking i was like okay we're probably gonna need to make a lot of pit stops which is completely fine you know Oxygen is important, especially if you're doing a series where you can't go above into the surface. After quite a bit of time, we eventually managed to find the monument. Yes, we were there. I looked around the monument for a bit and wondered where all the guardians were. After encountering them, along with the haste that we were given, I soon found the exit or the entrance to the monument. I went inside, blocked it off from the back so none of the guardians outside can come inside and bother me while I try to siege this structure this was not going to be easy especially because a little bit of my oxygen tank has already been taken out so i was not working with the optimal amount i looked around for a bit got myself attacked a whole bunch of times luckily for us we stockpiled on quite a bit of food which gave us a little bit of the upper hand our low oxygen filter was not going to get the best of us i decided to fully use and utilize the doors that we were given after exploring a whole bunch we then encounter the first elder guardian for the first one i was nowhere near prepared i actually had not a lot of experience fighting underwater in general especially not with bosses that have a bit of a pattern to them but don't get me wrong this was preparing us for the creature we had to slay at the very end of these hundred days the first one was surprisingly very easy to kill i did utilize the fact that i had doors in a bit more space and blocked most of the shots from it it didn't deal too much damage and eventually i did kill it it gave me its spines and an eyeball, which was a little gross, but I guess it's some sort of a trophy. Looking further into the sea temple, I then encountered the second one. Now this one was a little bit trickier. I'm not sure what it was about this one, but this one was a lot harder than the last one. I may or may not have gotten a little confident and started taking in a lot of the big hits. So luckily for us, we had a little bit of a safe zone, which was just a compilation of doors. But at the very end, we came at top. There was only one of the guardians left. We just had to find them. When I tell you I went around the entire thing in terms of the bottom layers, I mean that. I went through every crevice, every corner. But what I didn't seem to realize was that there was a really up high tip of the place. That's where the last guardian was. We ended up finding it at the very top. I decided to straight up attack him. I was feeling a little bit more confident because I was getting a little comfortable with underwater fighting. 
and they were down finally i was going to lose the haste effect i was then able to place the oxygen tank again the next move from here on out was to find the sponges located within the monument the reason why this is important is because if we ever get a flash flood again, I'll be able to remove the water in no time. This also led me to find like every single corner of the place that I could possibly find, but I honestly had no luck. I'm not sure if it was because of the version of Minecraft that I was on, but there were no sponges. Like I, I genuinely couldn't find any. So the only sponges we had were the drops from the Elder Guardians, which honestly at this point I was okay with. I didn't want to stay here for any longer. I decided to mine my way out and I was back into the waters. I found this ravine that looked a little strange and upon exploring it I didn't find much so I quickly swam back up but shortly afterwards I found another ravine one of those ravines with magma blocks at the bottom so it kind of sucks you into them but I decided to check it out because it looked kind of intriguing. I soon found a little bit of a thing that grew there which was I'd like to say prismarine plants? It's a little bit on the iffy side but some prismarine went down there and it kind of looked like scalactites in a sense but it also looked like some sort of a mineral. It was kind of cool. Further exploring down there, I then soon come to realize that there's a bit of a mineshaft down there. I was like, you know, we finished fighting the Elder Guardians and we got a bit of time so why the heck not, right? Let's go mining a little bit. After entering the area, I right off the bat find some diamonds and I'm like, okay, this has to be a sign of good luck, does it not? Come on now. I went further and further into the mineshaft. I was really eager to see if there was any more diamonds. I decided to utilize the one time that I got lucky on one of these runs. Days 56 to 60. After the trip into the mineshaft and getting a couple of diamonds, which wasn't that much by the way, I then decided to come right back out. So I went back the same way I came from and was slowly walking until I noticed something was a little bit off. It was flooded. This had to have been one of the flash floods, but my question was, what was the mob that was with this flash flood because there's a chance that it's sharks? eels, a whole bunch of stuff, so I didn't exactly know what I was expecting. I chose to decide that it was going to be the worst of the worst, which was a bunch of aggressive sharks that just rip apart my shield and completely destroy me. But I kept my head up. I wanted to swim past them, and honestly, I just wanted to go home at this point. I was not going to deal with any of that, so I decided to slowly walk into the flooded zone. After moving a few steps further, I come to the realization that I was surrounded by jellyfish. Jellyfish give you poison and there is a slight chance that they can even give you up to 5 minutes of poison. Roaming around the world with half a heart, especially when you're underwater when there's things like creeper fish, sharks, I wasn't gonna do that. I quickly blocked myself up but that wasn't much of a choice. They pinned me to a corner. From what I can tell of that situation, the flash flood has been there for quite a bit. Because in the beginning of the flash flood, there's usually around 20 of the same species of mob. So luckily the severity of it was a lot less since it's probably been there for a while. So I quickly broke the blocks after regenerating a couple of hearts and swam the heck away. On my way out of there, I also ended up finding a bit of a shipwreck. I looked inside of it and found a map but I couldn't go up to the surface. Rest in peace the buried treasure that we would have been able to find if we were allowed to do that. But obviously, you know, it's whatever. The stuff in there is probably not even that good. In this duration, I also found some ruins. There wasn't much to it. I just thought it would be kind of interesting to mention. On the second shipwreck that I found, I was attacked by sharks. After looting the shipwreck, I then start slowly sinking to see the shark itself, but quickly escape. But then get encountered by one of its shark friends. This one was a little bit near the surface, so I don't think I could get any crits in, but decided to just smack it up. Luckily for us, it didn't actually come back down, so... We were good to go. After that, I went on my way back to our base. On the way, we also ran into a few more sharks and decided to tackle them a bit. Listen, alright, when your boy feels confident, a lot of risks are taken, alright? Day 61 to 65. I went back into the mines to get some lapis. We needed that if we wanted to enchant any of our stuff. I also decided to locate the books that we had because, you know, we had a bunch of them. It's a lot more efficient if I start enchanting the books instead of the armor pieces themselves even though I decided to get like the bare minimum enchants to my diamond set of armor. This took a while because I really didn't want to waste any of it on useless enchantments but you know it was kind of inevitable. I couldn't really find a way around this. This had to happen whether I liked it or not. This is exactly where the Neptunian blocks come into play because I used those Neptunian blocks to not only make myself an axe, but also make myself a full set of Neptunian armor. This was big. This was going to not only help me just survive throughout these 100 days, 
but it also is gonna help me with the creature I will have to face at the very end. Not only is it really strong armor, but it's also got a ton of buffs. From swimming faster underwater to even strength when fighting underwater mobs. And obviously, if I end up enchanting my diamond armor, I'm obviously going to be enchanting this new armor set and the axe that I have. That's just common sense, right? So that's exactly what I did. I took my new set of enchanted armor and an enchanted axe with fortune 1 on it and went straight to the nether. Day 66 to 70. In the nether, we decided to test the waters of the axe itself. It was pretty efficient, I'm not going to lie. Gathered a bunch of wood, then went on a journey in order to find a nether fortress. I may or may not have forgotten to copy down the cords to the first one we found, so... This was another journey. Alas, I finally found a nether castle. After exploring it a bit, I found a couple wither skeletons and decided to kill it. But eventually, I come to the realization that I don't have looting one on my axe. I'm a bit of a moron. And instead, I had fortune one. Day 71 to 75. After realizing the slip up that we did, I went back to the base because I still had some books and I had a decent amount of levels. So I was going to give that a shot. Whether it was creating a bunch of wooden swords to even creating some iron swords as well, which was a really inefficient way to use my iron. I ended up with nothing. There was nothing that I needed. Everything that I got was very pointless. I did end up upgrading a couple of my stuff, but nothing too crazy. We weren't getting looting and I don't think I had the luxury of spending enough time in the nether to get those levels back just so I can get another chance. So I decided to just head back over to the nether castle. This process took a while before getting my first wither skeleton head. My chances to getting one of these was honestly atrocious. And the fact that I managed to get one was incredible in itself. Despite the odds and the chances not really being on our side, I decided to keep going because I really wanted to kill the wither in this run. Fast forward a bit and day 76 to 85. So during this time frame, I waddled around the fortress like the looting swordless person I was. I found quite a few wither skeletons. I also did a bit of research on this and apparently, if you're 25 blocks away from the wither skeleton or the wither skeleton spawn area, they have a chance of respawning within the nether castle. So that's exactly what I did. I utilized that concept and every once in a while, I'd leave the place just to come back. And we eventually found our second wither skull. I was pretty happy. This one took a lot less time than the last one, so we were fortunate enough for that. Sadly, at this point, I was losing a lot of motivation. I kept killing the wither skeletons, but got nothing after nothing after nothing. As any sane person in my situation would do, I gave up. You know, I was wasting a lot of time in the nether trying to get these heads just to end up getting two. But the third one, honestly, I was not having any luck whatsoever. After making this decision, I start heading my way back to the portal. Days 86 to 90. A bit of this time was actually taken back making it back to the portal, but I was in fact sprinting and taking as many shortcuts as I possibly could, but eventually we did manage to get back. I decided to upgrade a little bit and went right back into my base. For the last thing I had in mind, I had to find this thing called the Leviathan's Lair. Now killing the Leviathan was not going to be an easy task, so I then started looking for some apples. Now if you guys remember, we got one of the apples from the one tree that grew within our base itself and not in the nether. And so I used that apple, made it into a gapple, and we were on our way. But right before I made that mistake, I also came into the realization that I'm probably going to be fighting it underwater. So I decided to make two more oxygen tanks. This is something I should have done a lot earlier. I'm not sure why I didn't. I guess the one we had was pretty sufficient and lasted us this long, so... It wasn't really much of a necessity until now. And then we finally decided to head out. I decided to take a couple turns and eventually wanted to explore the side of the world that I didn't generate yet. That way it would have a much higher percent chance than the chunks that we've already loaded in. Along with this, I knew a couple of tips on finding it a little bit faster. You'll know when you're near a leviathan's lair, when you start freezing before even reaching the underground portion of it. And the two most common biomes that they spawn in are coral reefs and dead zones. So I knew what I was looking for. I knew how to find it. I just went for it. Days 91 to 97. I'm still wandering around the ocean. Luckily for us, we had the armor set that increases our swimming speed when we're underwater. And it made things a lot faster. I ran by most of the mobs and situations that we could have ended up here. But I also did end up having to make multiple pit stops as usual when exploring anything for air and had to wait for the air to replenish and this was a bit of a loop process for a while. Fortunately for you guys in the editing, this part's primarily, you know, skipped by, but 
Unfortunately for me, I had to sit there waiting for the air to replenish every single time. Also, I ran into a bit of an issue. During certain areas, I actually had to replace the Neptunian armor with the diamond armor that I had because of the simple fact that I sometimes freeze or get scorched when I don't have it on. So I kind of bounce between the two. Depending and varying on the biome that I was in. Days 98 to 99. I was honestly getting a little nervous because the Leviathan is not going to be the easiest thing to kill. Not only this, but it's in its element, the water. I was in the disadvantage, but luckily on the 98th day, I managed to find its lair. How did I know you might ask? Well, it was a lot more apparent than I expected it to be because there was a Nautilus shell that was activated right above it to keep the layer safe or something I'm, I'm i'm not really entirely sure but i wasn't complaining because if it wasn't for that i would have completely swam by it i decided to place a door right on top of it that way i'd be able to replenish a little bit of my air right before i go to into attack it i've never been in one of these and have never fought the leviathan before all i really know about it is that it exists in its layer and wouldn't be the best idea to let it go because if it's just loose in the ocean <laughs> goodbye fish Goodbye my main food source. I found a little opening and decided to enter. Within the layer, to my surprise, was actually not flooded. There was a little bit of water on the ground floor, but besides that, it was pretty open. From what I can tell, I think there was even a rib cage in there. Beyond that, it was a little blurry and it was kind of hard to see. It was probably because it was raining outside, or maybe that's just the effect that the place gives off, but it was very hard to make out as to what anything was. Luckily for me, there was a torch upon entering that I decided to grab. There was also a lantern that was around there, but I couldn't bother with that. I was just going to stick with the torch. Prior to angering the boss, I also decided to make a bit of a safety shelter in case anything goes wrong. With these types of things, there's a lot of things that can go wrong, and I wasn't going to die. I've survived almost 200 days worth of this. I was not going to let some dumb leviathan get me killed. After the safety shelter was intact, I put a piece of glowstone in front of it to indicate that that's exactly where it was. I was a little happy because I honestly thought that we were gonna have to fight this thing underwater and to find out that there's barely any water here in general, I could probably treat it like an iron golem like I do with a lot of mobs and kill it off that way just to be safe because again, I don't wanna die. But that would also mean that some sort of functionality within the Leviathan would allow it to move on land, which was kind of terrifying to think about. At the very end, I found this thing that seemed to look like it was a bit of a trident. What the heck was that? Shortly after ending up there, the room flooded. There was a huge noise that emitted and the battle has started. The Leviathan was in the room with me. When I say that we were down to half a heart, I meant it. Everything was going wrong. I'm not even sure how many hits on it I got. This axe was really overpowered, so the fact that it's not dead yet, I was a bit worried. Luckily for us, we managed to escape through the safety shelter that we made in the very beginning. I knew it would come in handy. I quickly started to eat and regenerate some of the health that I lost. In the midst of all this, I also decided to make a shield. I'm not sure why I didn't make one in the beginning. That probably would have been a really good idea. Days 99 to 100. This was it. I didn't have a lot of time. I need to get this fight over with. My shield was actually very effective and blocked a bunch of the shots, though the durability was slowly decreasing. In the midst of all this, I also ran out all of my heating pads, so we were not able to cure ourselves from freezing anymore, which was a little bit of a setback. And the Leviathan is now dead. It was over. Shortly afterwards, the entire room had gone back to normal. All of the water that flooded it was just completely gone. And so I went up to the trident and searched for anything because I didn't see the Leviathan drop a single thing. So upon approaching the trident, I then come to find that it dropped a thing called the Dragon Soul Crystal. I had no clue what this did, but in all honesty, I didn't care. We made it. I really wanted to end off days 100 to 200 back at our base, but we didn't have enough time to do so. So instead, we decided to just stick around here. Now, I know we didn't get around to killing the Wither. We only had two skulls and I was missing a third. Hopefully, if you guys did enjoy, we can create a part three of this. And all you gotta do for that is hit that subscribe button, drop me a thumbs up, you know, basically letting me know that you guys enjoyed it. And that's it. That's how I survived days 100 to 200 underneath the water. Oh, you're still, you're still sticking around. Um, well, the details for this is basically we implemented a couple more mods into the mod pack. As you could probably already tell, that's kind of why I went to the new chunks and edited a couple of the config files. But besides that, we really didn't do much different. And if you guys have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comment section below. Peace.